When the sun dips below the horizon and passengers shuffle onto their final flights of the day, something remarkable begins at the world's busiest airports. Runways that just hours ago were crowded with queues of commercial jets suddenly glow in eerie blue light. The control tower quiets, but doesn't sleep. Down below, a whole other operation takes over. It's not just flying at night that's different, it's everything. The systems, the procedures, even the lights on the ground. This is the story of what it takes to keep an airport running while the rest of the world is asleep, and why the night shift is often the most demanding of all. Night flying isn't new, but what is new is how complex our airports have become, and how seamlessly they continue to function, hour after hour, even when visibility drops and the sky turns black. Whether it's a quiet regional airfield or a mega hub like Heathrow or JFK, Nighttime operations demand planning, technology, and coordination that's almost invisible to the average traveler. But in aviation, nothing just happens. Everything has a reason. And nighttime flying is one of the most carefully choreographed dances in the industry. Let's start with the most obvious change, airport lighting. When you're on a nighttime flight and taxiing to the runway, you might notice the blue and green lights lining the pavement. But what you're seeing isn't random, it's a language. Blue lights mark the taxiways. Green lights line the center line of those taxiways. White lights guide the runways. Red lights signal the end of a runway. And amber or yellow tones. Those warn pilots they're approaching a hold short line or a runway crossing. These lights are built to be low profile and incredibly durable, with some even heated internally to resist snow and ice in colder climates. What's more impressive? They're integrated into an advanced lighting control system, usually operated from the air traffic control tower. Controllers can adjust brightness levels depending on visibility, weather, or specific flight movements. At major airports, runway edge lights and approach lighting systems can extend thousands of feet into the sky, creating a virtual highway for pilots to lock onto during final approach. Even the poppy lights, those little red and white lights near the runway, Tell pilots if they're too high or too low. Too red, too white? You're right on glide path. It's lighting with a purpose, and in the dark, it's mission critical. While the air outside cools and quiets, the air traffic control tower stays sharp. But the dynamics shift. At night, the traffic volume drops, but the challenges increase. Visibility is limited. Pilots rely more on instruments. Controllers must be more precise, especially with reduced visual cues. And here's something many don't realize. ATC sectors consolidate at night. Instead of dozens of controllers handling different portions of airspace, operations are often combined to reflect lower demand, but the same level of complexity. That means one controller might be handling multiple frequencies and coordinating with both departure and arrival sectors, sometimes even on route traffic. One wrong callout, one misheard instruction. That's all it takes. And in places like New York, London, or Tokyo, where late-night cargo flights mix with international arrivals, it's a mental marathon. Meanwhile, ground control juggles tugs, fuel trucks, catering, cleaning crews, all moving in dim light, where a single misstep could become a safety incident. Pilots flying at night enter an entirely different world, one where the rules of perception begin to shift. In the dark, depth perception weakens, you can't gauge distance the same way. Peripheral vision narrows, and contrast drops sharply. Clouds become harder to see, terrain less defined. In some cases, you may lose the horizon completely, especially when flying over open water, desert terrain, or urban blackouts where ambient light vanishes. In these moments, your senses can betray you. It's a phenomenon known as spatial disorientation. Without visual reference, even experienced pilots may begin to feel like the aircraft is banking or climbing when it's not. Some have inadvertently entered dangerous attitudes because their bodies told them something their instruments didn't. This is where IFR, instrument flight rules, take over. The cockpit at night becomes a world of glowing gauges, digital readouts, and situational awareness screens. The artificial horizon becomes your best friend. The altimeter, your compass. Pilots are trained to trust their instruments over their instincts, because instincts, in the dark, can get you killed. But that's just the start. Fatigue is the invisible enemy. Flying through the night messes with your circadian rhythm, your body's internal clock. When it thinks you should be asleep, 
you're flying through clouds at 30,000 feet. That's why night flying specific training is mandatory for many commercial and long haul pilots. They're taught how to manage alertness, how to nap strategically during off duty hours on ultra long hauls, and how to recognize micro sleeps, those dangerous seconds when your brain involuntarily switches off. Even in the cockpit, lighting plays a role. Instruments are often backlit in red or amber hues, which help preserve night vision. Overly bright displays can cause temporary blindness when looking outside, so brightness is dialed down to a soft glow. And here's something you may not have noticed as a passenger. The cabin slowly prepares you for the outside world. About 30 minutes before landing at night, the cabin lights begin to dim gradually, not just for ambience. This prepares your eyes to adjust to the dark outside. If an emergency evacuation were to happen, your vision is already partially adapted. A sudden evacuation in pitch black could otherwise leave passengers effectively blind. It's a subtle but critical safety protocol. Meanwhile, up front, pilots rely on terrain awareness systems, weather radar, and even infrared camera systems on some newer aircraft to maintain situational awareness. Nighttime storms can be invisible to the naked eye but glow vividly on radar. Clear air turbulence, still undetectable, but now tracked more effectively using predictive systems and reports from other aircraft. But it's not just pilots and passengers facing challenges. Nature doesn't sleep either. Wildlife hazards, especially birds, don't disappear after dark. In fact, some species become more active at dawn and dusk. Owls, bats, and certain migratory birds move during the night, increasing the risk of bird strikes. And here's where airports innovate. Using bird-detecting radar, acoustic deterrents, and even trained falcons, some airports actively monitor animal movement. Lasers, sound cannons, and even drones are deployed in more advanced airports to keep airfields clear, especially during the nighttime lull, when fewer people are watching but the danger is still very real. Even insects can interfere with sensors and landing lights, especially in tropical regions. Some airports modify light temperatures to reduce insect attraction or clean equipment more frequently during the overnight hours. All of this, the technology, the training, the tiny adjustments you'd never notice as a traveler, is what makes night flying possible. It's not just about seeing in the dark, it's about mastering it. Now we come to the invisible army working behind the scenes, the airport night shift. As the final passengers exit the terminal, cleaning crews sweep in. Jet bridges are repositioned. Lavatory service vehicles quietly make their rounds. This is also when critical maintenance begins. Runways are closed in sections so engineers can perform friction tests, paint touch-ups, light replacements, and debris removal. Ground radar, instrument landing systems, and weather sensors all undergo checks, often only possible during the midnight window. Fuelers refill massive tanks. Baggage systems are recalibrated. Everything is cleaned, inspected, and reset for the next day's wave of departures. And just before dawn, international long hauls start arriving. Red eyes from the West Coast. Overnight transatlantic flights. Pilots report in. Gates are reassigned. The dance begins again. Nighttime operations aren't just a nice to have, they're essential. They allow for global connectivity in a 24 7 world. They support cargo flights that move the world's goods while we sleep. They enable maintenance without disrupting daytime traffic. And for the airlines, those 3 a.m. slots? They're not dead weight, they're opportunities. Every flight, every gate, every worker on the night shift is part of an incredibly optimized machine. A machine that, if paused even for an hour, could bring the next morning's flights to a grinding halt. When you board a flight at midnight or arrive groggy-eyed on a 5 a.m. connection, it might feel like the airport is half asleep. But it isn't. Behind the dim lights and the quiet corridors, a full-scale operation is underway, one built on precision, discipline, and systems designed to function in total darkness. Because for aviation, the night never sleeps.